ready for phase two of my uh, redesign of this uh, slide valve steam engine. Uh, you've already seen these things. Well, you, you haven't seen these little bits, and you've seen this, except you haven't seen the little valve components that I've made. It isn't sort of much, there isn't much development on it all, but uh, it was all fiddly work, so uh, I'm going to undo it, show it all little by little, so you can have a better idea of uh, what the problem is. You've already seen this bit. You haven't seen that or that or any of this, do you see? Uh, this is just the cylinder and what I did, I made two ports. This is an exhaust port. This is uh, a steam or compressed air inlet and this is the valve mechanism. The steam chest, the valve spindle, valve itself, the sort of cross piece and the valve nut that sits in there and it has a screw thread so it can be adjusted. This is the cover for the steam chest and I've put it over to one side so that you can see the actual working of the valve itself. Now all the parts are disassembled. I like the word dismantled much better. This is the cylinder block that you've seen before and this is the fitting for the exhaust which goes out through that hole. Uh, I leave that on because there's no point in taking it off. You can see that. So I'm putting that on one side. But the next thing that I made which of course goes on top of the cylinder is the valve plate. On top of the valve plate goes the valve itself and we'll just put that there. The steam chest with the inlet fitting for the compressed air or steam has this spindle that runs in and out and you probably can't see it very well there but it has a screw thread. I used a um, 448 thread because this gives a finer adjustment uh, and in fact in a linear sense it gives exactly the same uh, adjustment as on the elderberry engine which is smaller but this is larger so in effect this gives an improved um, range or, or a finer range of adjustment to the position of the valve. Now basically this sits together like this and moves in this fashion. Now you say what keeps this in tight contact with the valve plate? Well, very simply, the pressure, because this is all covered up, the steam or air pressure comes into this space, and therefore the positive pressure keeps this little piece pressed down, and the rest just guides it uh, as it goes in a back and forth motion. There's one more thing I want to show you. And this is the blank aluminum part, which will be the upright, this part, on the finished engine. Now, what I do always, I put a little marking blue on, and I mark out the positions of the holes and the cut lines, because when I'm doing this on the mill, it I have to count very carefully the number of turns, you know, a 50 thou, one turn on the wheel, well you can soon learn lose count, especially I, I can, so that if you are out a little bit, it will soon show up, you mark these out accurately and measure them, and therefore when you come to the point of having to uh, actually drill 
and ream these holes. Uh, before you actually start the work, you can bring the center bit down and by golly you'll soon know if you were off a tiny bit and you can recheck and that saves doing all this work again because I've used a fly cutter to flatten both sides. These are accurately done and the other thing I've done is I've drilled and tapped the mounting holes in the bottom before I cut anything out and the reason for that is simply when I've cut everything out it's going to be much harder to hold in a vise and this way I've got a nice rectangular piece that I can hold in the vise and uh, make sure that I've, I've, if I forget to do those later it's going to be terribly difficult to do them. This is really part of uh, phase three and this is only phase two but since I made this little push rod, the push rod from the slider which is activated by the eccentric uh, I thought I'd show it's a very simple connection that's all it is but uh, I'm going to take this apart and give you a closer look at some of the valve components themselves as for the shoulder bolts uh, this is the one that goes in the end of the little push rod to the slide spindle or the slide valve spindle and it's in the end. The other end is simply a eighth hole which will take the shoulder bolt uh, that connects it to the uh, actual slider or the, the, which goes, it's difficult to, they've all, they're all, they all slide but uh, this is in the part that is activated by the eccentric. These are two more of these little shoulder bolts, different lengths of uh, the shoulder and different lengths of the screw thread. Uh, but they're fiddly to make but they're done now. And of course this is the shoulder bolt that uh, goes into the crank disc which acts at, as the crank pin. Yes, I'm holding it upside down and it's staying together. Why? Well, surface tension. Both these surfaces are very flat and in fact it's, you've got to pull that one apart. That's the as you've seen before, the actual uh, cylinder and this is the well, plate that goes on top of the cylinder and working on that is the actual valve itself. This slot here, this slot here has the, carries the uh, the spindle and the wider slot going from side to side here uh, has the nut that, uh, and you'll see the nut, here it is, and all it does, it fits together, I'll try and get them together here, there we go, so that's what it does, and of course the central piece here being on a screw thread gives you a measure of adjustment, in fact a quite a fine measure of adjustment. So those are the, in detail, in close-up, are the valve parts. The steam chest cover plate with its four holding down bolts speaks for itself. But again, it has to be flat, there are no gaskets used and uh, it has to seal very well. 